Kansas Republicans are continuing the push for abortion restrictions. A new bill would change reporting requirements for providers. What's inside the plan? Plus, a medical marijuana pilot program is in the works and lawmakers could soon take it up. What's inside the proposal? We're taking a look inside Kansas politics. Welcome in. I'm Rebecca Chung. It's been a busy week at the State House. We have a panel of experts in to break down the biggest topics. We have state and local government expert Bill Finder and Rachel Mepro, State House reporter for the Kansas Reflector. All right, Bill, Rachel, let's get into it. First up, let's talk about one of the latest bills to pass at the State House, House Bill 2749. Now, this bill would change reporting requirements for providers. They'd have to submit reports to the State Health Secretary on a biannual basis, so that's twice a year instead of annually. And then it would also include a survey requiring doctors to ask patients why they're getting an abortion. Opponents say the bill places an undue burden on patients and providers, but supporters say it provides a better understanding of why people get abortions. Now, the bill passed the House 81 to 39. It's now heading to the Senate. And the bill received a lot of pushback, though, from Democrats and abortion rights advocates. But Republicans argue that knowledge is power yeah. in this case. Yeah. So what are your thoughts, Rachel? Yeah, so let's look at the fact we already have an annual survey, right? We have a pretty comprehensive report coming out every year that gives the age, the race, the demographic, where they're coming from, how long they are. So we already have a lot of information. What advocates are saying is why do we need more intrusive questions at a time when a woman's going to be very sensitive, very vulnerable. And then if you look at the actual questions themselves, there's things on there like, is this child a product of rape? Um, are you being domestically abused? Things that are kind of out of the box. And one of the earlier versions of the bill even had questions that were like, are you getting this abortion because you don't want people to know things like you're sexually active? So if you look at the questions, they're kind of, you wonder why they need to be this way. And again, we do already have a lot of this data. So I think that's where this argument's coming from. All right, Bill, what's your take? Yeah, one of the <clears throat> excuse me, one of the questions, Rachel, uh, is not, that's not on there is, do you want an abortion because you want an abortion? Uh, the women, there's all these other factors that are imposed upon the woman to get an abortion, but that's apparently the one, if it's your choice, for your own reasons. It's a complex answer, and um, I, uh, it's like asking or surveying a trauma, a victim in the middle of the trauma, you know. Uh, are, is the data going to be that reliable? Is it going to be um, uh, necessary? Is it that eth ethical? Is this going to improve the health outcome of the women involved and uh, the women to come after? So I don't know. I, I sense that I'm, I'm a social scientist. I'm all for gathering data uh, to improve outcomes and to make things better, which is what you do. But this certainly has a feel that maybe it's less about data, uh, more about intel for political campaigns, possibly. So um, these are pretty intrusive questions from mm. what I have read in the bill. And we also have that reporting requirement of twice a year. So what, what, what do you guys think that's about? Again, I don't know that... Are we, are we taking it on good faith here that this is really about data collection or is it going to have a chilling effect on people seeking abortion? Because again, some of this data, um, how would you prevent per se like the incest requirement? How are you going to fix that if you're looking at this as genuinely an attempt to help out women? So these things are trying to find out. Um, again, it's hard to tell how any of this will come up from a useful health perspective. And Rachel, this isn't the only bill we've seen come up this year, right? We've also seen one requiring patients to get an ultrasound before getting an abortion, and then also, I think, describing those images. So what are some others on your radar? Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. We have at least, I think, 10 right now bills that we're trying to keep afloat and a track of. Um, I think two of the ones that I've been tracking more closely is one that would allow a pregnant woman to get child support for medical costs during pregnancy, and there's another that would make it a crime to coerce a woman into getting an abortion. That would carry a jail time with it, some fines, that would be a felony essentially. And then if the father of the child was found to have been coercing a woman to get an abortion when she didn't want to get an abortion, he would have a heightened jail time sentence and even more fines and fees attached to that. We're also seeing a lot of maternity center funding, a lot of crisis pregnancy center funding um, being proposed as well. Okay. So those are a couple. And, you know, it goes back to also how likely 
are these bills to move forward? There's also the expectation of the governor most likely vetoing some of this, these bills that do pass. But right now, with the recent one that passed with HB 2749, it doesn't seem like the numbers are there to override on this one. Um, I, I looked at that. It, it, there's a few people that were not there that could get them to the 84. Okay. So I would not completely roll this out at all, Rebecca. Uh, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's close. In fact, uh, it, it, I could see where it, it could be an, uh, an override. Right. But I, I, I mean, there's so many bills. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure which, yeah. Yep. Uh, they're going to get caught up in the wash, uh, so, so we're not sure what, which one is going to be the, their focus uh, to fight. Okay. Your take, Rachel? Yeah, I'm with Bill on this one. It's going to be tight no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, it's hard to predict at this point, though. I think definitely we're going to see at least some more funding for pregnancy centers. I don't know if they will be able to override or not on these. But I do think this is not the last we're going to see of abortion legislation. Rachel, Bill, thank you. Up next, we're tackling where lawmakers stand on marijuana. A new bill is in the works. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Protect your home from sudden power outages with a Generac Home Standby Generator. Installed by Shockwave Electric certified experts. Call Shockwave Electric for all your commercial and residential electrical services. I'm Justin Glasgow, owner of Performance Tire Auto. This season, don't just change your tires, upgrade them and save. From March 1st to April 30th, get up to a $100 Cooper Tire Reward with the purchase of four qualifying tires. Drive away confident. No matter what the weather, your journey to better performance starts here. Visit us today at either of our two locations, 17th and Topeka Boulevard or 1735 North Kansas Avenue. Growing the market for Kansas-made E15 is a win-win for Kansans. What's E15? It's fuel with 15% ethanol compared to the usual 10% in regular unleaded. E15 is more affordable, has better performance, and runs cleaner than regular unleaded, meaning Kansas drivers can go further for less. From helping Kansas farm families by stabilizing grain prices, helping Kansas become more energy independent, and adding more than 4,000 jobs in Kansas, more of our money stays right here at home because of ethanol. Visit fueledbykansas.com to find a station near you. Vanderbilt's has one of the largest selections of boots and jeans in the area. Save $45 on durable Wolverine overpass boots. Sale price, $119.99. New style? Check out Timberland Titan EV boots, $149.99. Save $26 on these comfortable Iron Age work boots, $119.99. Great selection of FXD work pants in store now. Your work boots and a Vanderbilt. Oh yeah, experience being treated like family. Big selection, more custom choices, and best price always, only at the Furniture Mall. Oh yeah. For news on the go, download the 27 News mobile app. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. Marijuana is the next big topic on our list. Now, there's a bill that could create a medical marijuana pilot program that could be taken up by lawmakers soon. So we spoke with Kansas Natural Remedies, and that's the organization behind the plan. And there are some restrictions to keep in mind. So they say that includes no edibles. They say that's because of some of the incidents that have happened with kids getting sick in school after eating edibles. If you remember, that happened at a Wichita middle, middle school last year. And there will also be no dispensaries, as that was another concern for Republican leaders. So there are concerns, though, that a pilot program could be too limited when it comes to access. So, Rachel, what do you think? Yeah, so let's keep in mind here that we're one of about 12 states left that have no form of either legalized medical marijuana or recreational marijuana. And then we're surrounded by Colorado, we're surrounded by Missouri, and we're surrounded by Oklahoma. So Kansans right now, they can get in their car and pretty much just drive over and find a dispensary pretty quickly. So already we're on training wheels where the rest of the states around us are on bicycles. And I think the concern right now is, is this pilot program going to do enough to help us pedal faster, as it were? Yeah. 
Well, another question is, would it have as great of an impact economically within our surrounding states having looser restrictions? Recreational weed, keep in mind, is legal in Missouri, for example. So even if a bill like this creates a legal pathway for Kansans to get weed here, will they even do that if they can just hop the state line and get recreational weed if they wanted to or get medical marijuana there as well? Uh, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. You, you name the states around us that are open for business. Um, except Nebraska, mm -hmm. and um, this bill is not written to be to make us competitive with with our surrounding states. Um, it's 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 a bit narrow, uh, and and so yes, 80 percent of our population lives next to these three bordering states. Um, so the economic reasons uh, to pass a bill are not really flying here with with colors, uh, and as you know. Two thirds of Kansans surveyed actually want recreational uh, for people over 21 years old. So, this is um, this almost feels like it's set up to fail uh, in terms of a, when you say pilot, and then pilot's a very safe word, and, and you can get and you can back away from that just as easy as you can uh, start a best practice. And this this feels like it's it could be set up for to have little economic impact and little access and so what are we doing right it's like a test run yeah uh, yeah right. that you already know kind of what the outcome might might be yeah and let's keep in mind here right we've been talking about this for at least four years now and then every year we do see a lot of the detailed plans the detailed research of how we're going to go about this mm -hmm. and so we already have kind of a framework in place so i guess one of the questions is why do we need the pilot program when we could just go straight into legalization yeah, it's not like we don't have other examples yeah. out there to use. This is, this is a, this is a. You said training wheels. This is a tiptoe. <laughs> this is a t stick, sticking your toe in the, in the shallow end. I'm sure there are going to be maybe some pushes in the future for recreational mm -hmm. legalization, but I think what they want to see is how this works out first, mm -hmm. um, and also Republicans pushing for a very conservative plan. Republican leaders, okay. so. Um, it's also a matter, like I said, of convincing Republican leaders to get on board. So it's up to the Senate mm -hmm. to take up a plan this year. Senate President Ty Masterson appears to be open to conversations about a pilot program. That's when we last spoke with him earlier this year. But he says there's also a high bar now to clear for any bill that comes through. So it seems like any plan would have to be pretty conservative. So what could make it through this year, do you think, Rachel? Mm -hmm. So because it's an election year, like normally I would say, I don't think we're gonna see any action at, with marijuana at all. But the election year status means they're gonna to wanna to have something to bring back to the voters and say, here's what we've done on this. We know this is an issue that has widespread support, like mm -hmm. Bill said. So I think maybe we will be seeing this pilot program, but the fact is we haven't really heard a lot about marijuana legalization and we are to the halfway point at this legislative session. So, I mean, again, we haven't seen much action and we are seeing a lot of days go by. Okay, the clock's running out. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah. All right, thank you both. Mm -hmm. We're talking Medicaid expansion. That's next. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Make this summer the best summer it can be with the best audio and lighting accessories. Come get your bike, motorsport, and boating audio and lighting at Car Toys. Locations in Topeka and Kansas City. We have better options, better prices, and the best accessories around, including all your motorcycle audio and lighting needs. From the best brands, Rockford Fosgate, JBL, Pioneer, and Kenwood. Let the party begin and start the fun with Car Toys. Visit us in Topeka and Kansas City. Need help posting a bond? 75 Bail Bonds has experience with the courts and knows how to work to your benefit. We offer fast, affordable, and convenient service. Call 75 Bail Bonds, your 24-hour bond service. Winter's first snowfall. It's a magical time. The kids are dressed and ready to play in the living room. Those leaky vinyl windows were a great deal, though. At Renewal by Anderson, every replacement window we install is custom-sized and precision manufactured to fit your home. That means a perfect fit every time. Kick those cheap, leaky windows to the curb. Visit our website to claim this month's great offer and schedule your free consultation.
Come out for a wonderful day of golf and support the Topeka Performing Arts Center at the annual TPAC Golf Tournament. Shotgun starts at 8 a.m. at Great Life Golf and Fitness at Shawnee Country Club. Register your team of four today at TopekaPerformingArts.org. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. I'm here with a team of political experts weighing in on the Medicaid expansion debate at the State House. Well, not quite yet, right? <laughs> not a real debate yet. But is it still a possibility this year? The governor introduced bills in the House and Senate to expand Medicaid. We're hearing that it could get a hearing soon, some people are saying. But then, you know, it's kind of here and go with that. But will it make it out of committee, do you think, Bill? Oh, uh, let me pull out the crystal ball. Um, I, I'm, I'm not overly confident. I'd be less than overly confident. Um, it's late in the game, and this seems a, a bit of a t tokenism, a little bit, to, to, to have the hearing. Uh, Governor Kelly, this is number one priority, pushed statewide campaign. Uh, we had we had the rally yesterday. It was yesterday at the, at the state house. I mean, we they're not giving up. Um, the pressure is still on, but the reaction has not been uh, proportionate. Uh, so we're we're late in the game. I, I'm I'm not getting great tea leaves on that this thing is going to get out, but th that's that's just more. Um, you know, I, 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 the the fact that it's an election year. Um, may produce more pressure than, hmm. than I'm thinking, but even if it doesn't get there, I think uh, Governor Kelly is willing to make this an election year issue for the people who do not uh, get it out of committee and don't get it onto the floor and don't pass it. Right, but then you have Republicans looking at reimbursement rates as a solution yes. as, a, as opposed to that, so maybe they're looking at pushing that plan instead. Rachel, what's your take on this? Will a Medicaid expansion bill make it to the floor this year or even out of committee? Will we see that hearing come up? Yeah, so I think you make a great point when you say we see these reimbursement rates being put forward as a solution. I think, again, we're going to have that sort of reliance on that as a stop all right now and less about Medicaid expansion. Because it's like Bill says, we're late in the game here. There's not a lot of enthusiasm within the conservative uh, Republican leadership about this. So I do think we're going to see the rates instead of Medicaid expansion, even though there is incredible enthusiasm for this statewide. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we were all at that rally. Um, there is just like cheering, chanting, a lot of kids and saying, we want this, we want this now. So we have that widespread support, um, but I think it will be another year. It's going to be stalled out. And I think it will be used in campaigns for mm -hmm. who's going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. So this will definitely be an issue we have not seen the last of. But will it happen this year? I'm doubtful right now that it will go through. Mm -hmm. If it did make it to the floor, do you think we can actually see it pass? Oh, so interesting. Yeah. Mm. See, we can't say anything because we're going to look like idiots either way. <laughs> like, it's, we're not going to come out on top with this one. But we do know there's a lot more support than is maybe publicly announced between rank and file yeah. Republican lawmakers. If there's a break from leadership, it, it, has a, it definitely has a chance. Yeah, and but then this year we already have seen sort of more of a break mm -hmm. from leadership mm -hmm. on issues like the flat tax. So there is that sort of unpredictable like faction here where there might be more fracturing inside the party than we know of. Right. I mean, increasing reimbursement rates, you know, is there, you know, a likelihood that that could kind of help people that are also in need seeking care? Yeah, yeah um, it, it could. I, I don't. I, I don't see enough yet. I, I don't know. It, it feels like a pivot uh, that, you know, if 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 they don't think the citizens of Kansas can understand why we should expand Medicaid, and they want them to understand instead this reimbursement path, you know, that's, that's even a, a bigger hill in in my opinion. It's, it's even deeper in the weeds than. Um, covering that 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 hole in, in that are that is uninsured, um, you know. Let's and also don't forget that there's an amenity effect in the rural communities. When you close a, a rural hospital, it's not just the hospital that's closing, and this is something that will come up, uh, no doubt, in elections. People leave, Pe young families leave. This I've, we've got research that shows, uh, in the non-expansion states, this is the effect it's having. And so rural communities won't just lose hospitals. If, if hopefully I'm wrong, and hopefully one uh, one of these things passes, and it will it will save a lot of those communities from from population loss and and saving their hospitals. 
And Rachel, you've done a lot of reporting on increasing the reimbursement rates. Based on what you're seeing, has that had um, or could have an impact on people seeking care? I mean, I'm sure it could. You know, any measure is a good measure when it comes to throwing more money at our health care systems. But then again, you look at Medicaid expansion, and that really probably, the research in states that have expanded shows it really does help out those rural hospitals. And we are really looking right now at a rural hospital crisis. We have got so many of them on the brink. There are dozens that could fall pretty soon. And that, again, will kill communities, as Bill says. So as Kevin Kelly says, this is going to be an issue that affects so many voters. And I think this will continue to really energize people on their way to the voting booth. So. You know, using it as a political maneuver, a political scheme in this way, is, is going to have its effects one way or the other. All right, thank you both. The debate over local control is popping up at the State House. That's next. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Normal. We're all trying to get back to it together. But what if there were a new normal? One where everyone recognized how much we need everyone else and how much we need everyone to be healthy. At Grace Med, that's our hope. That's why we provide a medical home in 16 locations with a wide range of health care services for everyone, regardless of their ability to pay. It's also why we deliver care when and where it's needed most. Because we're Grace Med, the home of hope care for everyone. Would you rather hear about sports from people who like to talk sports or hear from the people who actually play and coach sports? The best predictor of future success is past success. K-Nation has the interviews and coverage you want for all things KU and K-State. When you do the small things correctly, big things will happen. Join us every Sunday night after 27 News at 10 for another exciting week of K-Nation. Sponsored by 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. I can't even focus on what you're talking about right now. <laughs> Aquaman win! It's all on the Kelly Clarkson Show. Count me in. Weekdays. Weekdays at 3 on 27 KSNT. Start your Friday with a donut. Fox 43 AM Live and Circle Coffee Company is giving away donuts every week to some lucky business. We'll draw a winner on Wednesday and deliver the delectable treats on Friday. Sign up your business today at KSNT.com for your chance to win. Sponsored by Circle Coffee Company. Minority entrepreneurs create jobs and contribute to the cultural and social fabric of our society. This month's Minority Business Spotlight is Nanny's Food for the Soul. Siobhan loves to cook delicious old-fashioned food from scratch. You can find them on Facebook. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. We're wrapping up with a look at bills that are stirring debate over local control. Now, one bill would block cities from enforcing bans on plastic bags, and that's something Lawrence has recently uh, enforced. Now, Rachel, you've been following this issue, and you also spoke with an environmental group that's weighing in. Yeah, yeah. So right now what we're seeing is that we have that plastic bag ban on the local level. And now lawmakers are trying to ban the ban itself, which is a really fun lead to do. Um, essentially, they just want to make sure that no one else can enforce these sorts of bans on plastic containers, plastic straws, and other single-use items like that. And then um, it is interesting when you look at this issue compared to the rest of our environmental state issues, um, because one environmental lobbyist I was talking to, he was making this point how we really don't have a cohesive policy on a lot of these environmental issues, right? Like it's the same debate between um, maybe more environmental energy sources versus our coal plants in the state. So we have this kind of thing where we have more green energy sources and we have our coal plants and we don't know which way we're going. There's some bills that would support keeping those coal plants open for longer. But then we also have some solar bills in the works as well. So some advocates are calling for a cohesive energy policy that's really gonna tie it together state-wise, show us a path forward, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna go to coal or are we going to try and look at more green energy? Okay. Um, also, another bill would provide money to help create and improve homeless shelters in the state, but with some strings attached. That includes requiring the enforcement of local ordinances regarding camping and vacancy. So no opponents to this bill, but there are, of course, some concerns. Uh, bill, what are your thoughts? 
Oh, well, um, if I'm a city right now, uh, homelessness, unsheltered population, that's number one A, if not one B, maybe, um, on my list of concerns that I, I'm trying to deal with. And guess what? I don't have the resources to deal with this. We can bring the community together like many cities are doing, uh, engage the stakeholders, co-create a plan uh, and a process and, put, and, and have uh, even set some money aside potentially. Localities, gen cities uh, and counties generally do not put any skin in the game when it comes to housing production. It's all passed through from federal uh, uh, HUD sources uh, and then state implementation through tax credits and some and some rebating uh, that goes on. So local skin in the game is, is has that's just not a thing um, generally. But some are starting to put some aside and put more into it. Uh, they could double what they put into it with through this program, a, a dollar for dollar match through this through this bill. Yes, there are strings. Um, enforcement of, of camping bans. Some cities have, have already done that, some, some have not. Um, if that is, but, but I look at this like you've got a patient that's bleeding out if you're the city and you have an issue that's bleeding, you have to stabilize it. And those camping bans, I think, in those cities have, have kind of acted in that way. Okay, we stabilize the patient, now what do we do to help them get better? And that's where they sit down and, and come up with, and it, it could be a local solution, transitional housing, it could be um, uh, more shelter, it could be camping zones, it could be something like that. So as long as the state doesn't go that far deep into tailoring a local solution, I, th I think, I don't, I, I think they'll be uh, receptive, uh, very receptive. They don't have the, the funds to, to implement their solution. So, Partnering with the state, even with some, some of those strings, seems like a, a, re a reasonable price. All right, that's all the time we have for now. Yeah. Bill, Rachel, thank you both. That was your look inside Kansas politics. If you want to keep up to date on all things Kansas politics, then follow us on social media. Follow us on X at NKS Politics. And on Facebook, just search Inside Kansas Politics. We'll also post the full video on YouTube. Just search KSNT News. And check KSNT.com slash inside dash Kansas dash politics for past episodes. If you have a story you want Kansas State legislators to hear or topics you think we should cover, let us know. You can email us at IKP at KSNT.com. We'll see you right here, same time, same place. Place. Have a good day.